Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune for the 25th day of February, 2020. Well, I guess, you know, we're going to have to contend with, this, with the coronavirus here in this country. I, I don't know what on earth, well, he doesn't think, so I don't know. You don't allow people to come back into the country on a plane filled with people that don't know you're sick or, or that you've been exposed. I, I don't understand. And then say, oh, I didn't know they did that. Yeah, well, don't lie. You did it. You allowed it. So here we go. You know, I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I seriously don't know what to say. So let's just look at the astrology. I, I'm just I'm just in shock. Well, we have, uh, again, Mercury retrograde is still in effect. So, you know, there could be delays. There could be all kinds of miscommunication and everything. Uh, again, you know, if you listen at all to the guy who is in the Oval Office, he's going to give you the wrong information about the coronavirus. And, you know, I, I don't understand. I just don't understand. Uh, the moon's in. I, why do they let him even out of the, I, Why do they let him in public? Why do they let him speak? Why do they let him anywhere? Why don't they just, why didn't they just get rid of him? And that would have been fine. You know, just, you know, find him guilty. You know, he has to go. I, I don't even know. I don't even know. So, uh, Moon, 12th house Pisces, still a retreat of under stress. Use your intuition. It's still pretty high right now. Anytime, anytime we're talking Pisces, you know, we're talking, you know, if you're an empath, that's going to be a little stronger today. Intuition is going to be stronger. A lot of empaths are also intuitive. Uh, I know we always like to break things down, but understand the empath aspect of self is the default state of everyone. <laughs> and then, you know, from there we might uh, uh, be a little more intuitive, but, uh, uh, but, it, but it all begins in emotion. That's the emotional resonance of the universe. And because uh, that's what it is, it's emotion and uh, it's love. And so that's an emotion. So there you go. Um, It is the default state, so we shouldn't really, it's like, oh, someone said to me, well, no, I think you're intuitive. I don't think you're empathic. It's like, oh, oh, come on. Stop. Just stop. Okay, think about what you're saying. You know, we always try to pigeonhole everything, and we just shouldn't. Uh, anyway, Sun, 12th house in Pisces as well. Oh, there goes a card. Uh oh, well, it's the Nine of Pentacles. Uh, let's see, 12th house Pisces still with the sun time. So it's the same, you know, we're still 12th house Pisces with a lot of stuff. Uh, time for self-reflection and reassessment. Uh, doors are opening though, and that's going to be a, a continued theme from yesterday. Doors are kind of opening, uh, but maybe not in the most conventional of ways. And I'll, and I'll tell you that here in a second, sun conjunct Mercury uh, good news is possible. Uh, creative ideas flow, but a semi-square with Venus, you're not feeling very supported right now, maybe with, with your normal associations in terms of what you want to accomplish. So either that's due to the fact that you don't have very good friends or, or you're around a bunch of negative Nellies or whatever, you know, uh, it could be that, but it could also just simply be that maybe you need to reassess what those goals are. Maybe if people are hesitant to support you, it could simply be that that where you're going, maybe they're not feeling comfortable about it. Maybe they don't see the same outcome that you do. So it could be a time to, especially with 12th house involved, it could be a time to sort of look at all of that and and see where all that that really is going and whether or not it's it's truly realistic. So you might have to you know sort of shape a little bit of it today if it seems like you know maybe the goal isn't as realistic as you thought. So it doesn't mean you can't get there, but it just means maybe you need another pathway, and that's going to come into play here later on. So uh, 12th, uh, let's see, the sun, uh, sextile Mars, another strong aspect. Uh, solutions are easily found, you know, so if you don't stay, you know, if you don't hang on to whatever your your perception or your conception of what it's supposed to look like, you know, maybe it's just what it, how it looks like needs to change. That's all. Maybe the goal is fine. Uh, trine North Node and Sextile South Node. Uh, someone new can enter your life here that supports your progress. So, again, you know, maybe the people 
that aren't supporting you. Maybe they just have limited vision for whatever reason. So again, just reassess. You might be on the right track. You just need someone else that can that can uh, maybe you know keep you going in it. And so so it just depends on on on. But but again, it's it's, it's it, the whole reassessment part is the key here. Just make sure it's realistic. It might be. It just needs someone else maybe to to talk it out with. Uh, let's see again. Mercury twelfth house Pisces. Again, we're still you know uh, in that and. Uh, uh, you know, again, intuition's high. Inward focus is warranted. Uh, sextile with Mars. Again, a decision may need to be made today. Assertiveness may be required. Um, you may be the one that has to do it. In other words, maybe nobody else can do it. Try in the North Node. Uh, listen to the underlying message, though. So again, you know, that whole inner voice where you're reassessing things and you're making sure that, that you're really on the right track here. Mars, 10th house Capricorn. Uh, so again, um, ambition is strong, uh, but a change in career or focus may occur. There's some stuff going on with the midheaven, and I can't remember where the midheaven is. Let's see, is it in Aquarius or no? I forget. Anyway, it, it's it's I forget where it is. But in any event, there's there's been a consistency with that, and and midheaven usually deals with career and possibly a change on that front, and so. That's also been going on this the last few days uh, and, and continues today. I just didn't look to see where the midheaven was. I have on the correspondences, and I know, let's see, the ascendant, was that in Gemini? Or maybe maybe it's Gemini where the midheaven is. Well, in any event, it doesn't matter. Just know that there could be some issues on the, on the, the, on, with career that, that could be, you know, moving in a better direction, basically. Uh, let's see, Jupiter's in the same place, so Saturn, Saturn, you know, the, they're both in, uh, Jupiter's in the 10th house in Capricorn, uh, Saturn's in the 11th, um, so again, you know, whenever you see Capricorn, you're talking also, along with the 12th house, you're talking about reassessment and all of that, uh, but in terms of Saturn, this one's been going on as well, reassessment at relationship values. Uh, they may change at this point, or they may end. Some may end. Some could begin. You know, especially if you're involved in a new path forward, then that could be the same. Uh, Uranus, same issues. Uh, first house Taurus, open to change and new experiences, breaking free from old patterns. So you can see this has been an ongoing theme the last few days. Uh, but the semi-square with Neptune is still there. Um, you know, we can really be played right now if we're not paying attention. Uh, there's a con going on right now, uh, collectively in the country, uh, and uh, you have to be careful. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, really strong voices right now, especially uh, in terms of the next election and who they're supporting. It can be a real minefield on social media right now, real battlefield. Um, I have pretty much, uh, unfortunately, had to decide to just really limit my involvement there now because it's just too toxic a place. Uh, nobody wants to let anyone else, I shouldn't say nobody, because uh, a lot of people do, want to just to allow for other people to think what they want and, you know, uh, but some can't let that be. They have to be insulting, they have to be divisive, they have to be nasty. Uh, uh, and, and, and no matter what you do to try to couch what you say, it's not going to matter. Uh, so again, you know, uh, it, part of this is the retrograde aspect of things going on. But part of it is just people are so upset that they've just become so caught up. You know, it's sixth ray stuff where, where you're, you're so caught up in the devotion and idealism aspect of self that maybe you cannot see the forest for the trees. So... You know, it can happen on both sides of the equation, and I think that it is. And I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to really, I think, open some doors for everybody in terms of, of how they actually derive, come to the conclusions they come to. You know, are you being swept up in something that is so grievance or cause-based that, that you, it, it becomes fanatical, and you can't even hear the truth, you know, about an individual? It's like, oh, no, they don't want to talk about that. No, we're just going to talk about this over here. Oh, but this is that. But it's like, no, 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 no. You have to look at the whole person. You know, we're either going to vet people or we're not, right? 
And so if you're feeling that way, take a step back or two steps back or three steps back and realize that, you know, if you're communicating that way with people, it's a turnoff. Whatever you're trying to convince people of, you won't. It's just that simple. So uh, Neptune, uh, again, 12th house Pisces. So again, we're still seeing that. Uh, inner focus, maintain a spiritual focus. Uh, you need to figure out what truly supports and, and supports you and sustains you, though, going forward. Um, it cannot be the ill-dignified aspect of the sixth ray. Go research the sixth cosmic ray. Go, go research the seven rays. And uh, uh, you, you can see how when these things are in play and, and you're processing the energy right, then you understand what, what, what the whole concept of devotion and idealism is. You know, it's staying true to spiritual values. But sometimes when the ego processes it, then it becomes this whole fanaticism. You know, this, the, the, it's how cults arise, unfortunately. And, and so it depends on how you're processing these energetic, you know, rays that are coming in on us. Uh, because it's actually the rays that, that, that affect us. They go through the different stars and planets and, and, and you know, the, the constellations. They go through all of that. They inform us through all of that. But, you know, it's really how we are processing them in terms of spirit or ego as to how they're going to manifest in our lives. And so if you when you see a lot of, you know, right now, we theoretically, the second ray, the second and the sixth are related. Love and love and uh, wisdom is the second and uh, uh, uh Devotion and idealism is a six. So you can see how as long as you stay, you know, as long as the second ray is truly informing, then spirit's going to inform that whole process. If it's not, though, that's when you get the cult movements and people start, you know, believing things. It's how Hitler came to be. It's how all this came to be, frankly. A little out of control, six, six ray energy where the, the energy itself is fine. It's just how, you know, human beings are processing it. And it's the last, you know, ditch or the last vestiges of, of patriarchy, you know. And so, of course, that's what's going to happen. You're going to end up in that, you know, master-slave type of relationship with somebody. And you don't obviously want to be there, but, you know, there you are. So, I don't know. So, I think that's, oh, well, one more Chiron. I, I wasn't doing, you know, all of the really outer things, but I, I think that they're really affecting us right now. So, I don't know how I can not. Now, Chiron's 12th house, but, it, but Chiron's an Aries, so a little more. So the healing process may be, you know, maybe a little not as tactful, <laughs> you know. So, so maybe you're not going to, the woundings will be deeply felt and everything, um, but the healing might not be quite as easy. It might be a little more, especially with Mars energy today. It's a Tuesday, so you got a lot of Mars energy. So you have all of this, this, this excess, you know, fire energy or will is trying to assert itself into the day, which, you know, can help you get things done. But sometimes, you know, especially during Mercury retrograde, oh my goodness, well, I could pretty well guarantee there's going to be miscommunication. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, you could end up, you know, standing out in someone's life right now as a healer, you know, if you're, if you allow your, your, your empathic side and, and, and your intuitive side to really shine forward here, you, you, may end up be because you're the energy is going to resonate with people and so people that are going to need you so empaths be aware of that right now Pe you, people may need you and you might not really feel like being needed but you know do what you can if you can because people are, are 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 upset right now so in any event chiron uh, and here we have same square with both the south and and north nodes of the moon uh life is changing right now uh and reflecting on past relationships is is seems to be what people are doing Again, were they based on out of control six ray energy uh, or, you know, are they or I shouldn't say out of control six ray energy. That's really not the right way to say this. Um, we because if you say that, then really what we're saying is that we we're just sitting around reacting to everything. But no, it's informing. And so, you know, it, it's trying to inform the soul's trying to inform the whole process because that's what this is. It's soul energy. Okay, that's what we're really talking about here. It's trying to inform the whole process, but it's just not happening. So, I don't know. In any event, uh, lots of crazy things going on. Let's go ahead, though, and take our first three cards. We've gone a little bit long on this, but the astrology is so profound right now. 
And with Mercury in retrograde, I just feel like I need to spend a little bit extra time. So let's go ahead and take our first three cards. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Um, no jury duty today, so I'm doing this at my new early morning time. <laughs> so I don't know. The jury thing went great yesterday, though. So hopefully I never have to go. But if I do, I do. Let's see. This is temperance. We had to see the other day. Maybe it was last week. It's the uh, 14th card of the Major Arcana. So you're looking at five energy. So change, obviously. But we have the angel transmuting, uh, well, blending water with fire, basically. Will with emotion. I think we had, and then the other one, I think, what did we have? Was it, uh, was it justice? Or was it something else? But it was where where you were balancing uh, intellect with uh, uh, will, and so we had one one major card doing that, and one and then we had temperance, and so we were basically bringing will and intellect and emotions into balance, and that really is what we need to be doing right now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. Keep doing that on the fourth card. That's so weird. The page of Cups. I've been getting the Page of Cups quite frequently, too. Uh, again, emotions are not settled. And, uh, you know, when there's so much chaos over your security, uh, whether it's health or whether it's just, you know, your everyday lives, uh, when things are in so much disarray and nothing is for sure, it's a tough way to live. You can't live in doubt all of the time. And the one fixed thing shouldn't be the chaos, right? It shouldn't be. And yet oftentimes, well, like right now it is. Uh, the Four of uh, Wands. This is such a great card. So I think what I'm going to do here is we're going to make temperance the center focus of this. Uh, and uh, uh, because I think that this is about relationships. And again, we're talking about a lot of them ending right now, potentially, or at least going through a change. Um, maybe they were, you know, cause based or emotion based. And, and so now, or, or maybe it's, maybe it's just, uh, uh, you're learning who to rely on at work. A lot of this is work related too. You've got a lot of those energies, a lot of 10th, you know, Capricorn can be about work. Uh, 10th house is about work. Um, the mid heaven is about work. And so basically I think that, that, uh, we may need to find a better balance perception wise as to whom we can rely on, uh, how, who's going to get us where we need to go here. Uh, if it can't just simply be our own by our own devices. Uh, and, and so often, you know, we have to, we have to work in conjunction with other people. Uh, we have to work in harmony with other people if we expect to advance any goals. So again, let's take a look at temperance. We see the angel, one foot on the ground, one foot in the water. Basically trying to uh, create a sense of groundedness out of uh, balancing will with emotion, fire with water. We see the yellow irises over there on the side, and we see on the other side, we see a pathway uh, going down to the water's edge through two mountain peaks, the sun rising between them. A new sense of uh, equilibrium, uh, doing things in moderation, uh, not allowing things to get too far out of out of kilter, basically. With emotions, you could have a new a new emotional resonance come out of all of that balance. We see a little fish put that, so it's a, a card of Pisces, so so it's definitely relevant for right now. We see the water in, in the background. And so you understand that you're not going to be, it's not smooth as glass, right? It, it's, there's not, it's not like you're going to have one mood only or one emotional resonance only. No, we're always going to cycle. That's always the way that it is. Check your biorhythm chart and you'll see that's true. You'll see all those sine waves and they're all, you know, they're, they're different ones for different things like physicality and, and intellect and emotion and intuition and all of you'll have you'll have several that you're looking at, but they're all in the sine waves, right? So you're going to have times where you're higher on it and, and more and more, you know, spot on and other times where you're just the energy's just not there. 
And that's basically what it's showing you. It's showing you the energetic flow. But with the page, you're talking a new message. You know, you're talking undeveloped potential. So we have the undeveloped potential uh, to, to bring emotions back into balance today. Uh, and basically what we have here, if we're looking at fire and water, that's exactly what we're looking at here. Fire and water. Now, with respect to the Four of Wands, this is an excellent card, by the way. You see the, the demarcation line back here? Uh, they're beyond it, aren't they? They're on the uh, castle side of, of, the, uh, uh, of the whole experience. But here, the four, the four staffs you, you have here represent the, each, each individual there, the man and the woman coming together in harmony. But first they had to come into harmony within before then they could uh, align with each other. Do you see how that's so? Up here, the garlands cross, and so that's like in Gebo, balanced energy exchange with others, the X in, in, in the X rune, if you will, the seventh rune of the Elder Futhark. It'd be interesting if we pull that today, given it's the seventh day, and that's basically what we're talking about here, coming into balanced energy exchange together, but it's an inner balance we reach first, before doing that with someone else. And four is about structure and foundation. So that had to happen first before the new foundation could be achieved. We see mind, body, spirit and balance there. We see three, three bouquets being held. The woman's only holding one. We see an arched bridge over there. Again, it looks like there's three archways there within it. You can't see the third. But they're creating a new foundation. And, you know, it's got to be with emotions and, and, and will and balance. You know, when it, again, right now, uh, we have the manifestation of six ray energy that is not in balance. It's, it's too cult-like right now. The feeling out there is too cult-like, and that's what we're experiencing. We're experiencing is uh, uh, the six-ray energy is strong right now, and we don't have the wherewithal to keep it in balance. Uh, the third ray may not be as strong right now, and so that's active intelligence, and so you're not seeing intellect come in to try to bring some rationality to the whole thing. And if you're if you are buying into the long-played con that's going on then maybe you become swept up. Again, sixth ray out of control. Right? Well, our, our, our ego response to the sixth ray is out of control. And we cannot understand that, number one, we're being conned by a master manipulator. And number two, uh, we're rising to it. And we're finding our, our, our sustenance through it. And that can't continue. It's how things like Jonestown happened. Back in the day, uh, when uh, Jim Jones went down to what is it, Guyana or something, and his followers were there with him, and it's 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 where it came the whole the whole thing of drinking the Kool Aid. Uh, that's I'm sure that that was out before that, but it really came gave new meaning because that's what they did. They drank the Kool Aid, and they died because it was poisoned. And so that's what that's what you get by following somebody like that. You you ultimately. You know, things change massively in your life, perhaps, you know, your death even. So it, it's just one of those things you don't want to do. Uh, but again, that's, it's just amazing, you know, have temperance and then to have, you know, fire and water be the surrounding cards. So that's cool. Uh, again, bringing will in balance with emotion. Uh, we don't have intellect to do that here, maybe. And... Things can, and when that happens, without that, things things can be really uh, uh, difficult. Mercury retrograde is not helping. Mercury would be the planet of intellect, a planet of communication. It's the air sign, uh, air element, uh, not air sign, but air element. And uh, and, and basically, it, it's just not gelling for people. Uh, they don't believe the the news anymore, uh, even though that you know the majority of the news, depending on well, depending on who you're looking at, you might get opinions, but you know the facts are the facts, and and nobody believes them because the con the guy in the you know the con artist involved, he's convinced people that they can't believe 
a simple news report. It, they can't believe a, a, a report from 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 Congress. We can't believe anything, and so they've su they've sufficiently loosened, you know, our hold on reality is what they've done. And with Mercury retrograde, it's just going to get it's, it could get worse if we dive right into that and be part of that chaos. What I've suggested is just to let the bonds loosen, let your perceptions loosen. Don't. In other words, step away from the television, step away from the social media, step away from the con artist, whoever it is, right, uh, on either side of the coin. Step away from the con artist long enough to think your own thoughts. Loosen your, in other words, loosen your attachment to that person. Allow that sixth ray energy to incorporate from a level of spirit instead of from a level of ego, and then you're probably going to be fine. Uh, but if not, then you end up succumbing to the chaos of someone else's, you know, machinations, which d doesn't make any sense. It, it just ends up causing more harm than it's worth. The rune today is Manas, and that's the rune for humanity, and it's perfect for, let's see, which one is it? It's the 20th rune, so it's a two energy, so balance, balanced energy exchange. Um, but it's self and others, basically. It, it, in my view, it's the uh, true service to others type of rune. Uh, I'm going to show you what it's comprised of. Uh, of course, we're going to have Isa on both ends. We're going to have Gebo in the center. So we'll explode it first that way. So, so Isa is the 11th rune of the Elder Futhark, and so you're talking the master number for illumination there, that type of energy. Uh, it's alignment and source presence, alignment and spirit in higher self, bringing your focus just to that, to who you are, instead of the ego part. The X is, is Gebo, it's balanced energy exchange with others, and that's where you get the whole notion of this being the rune of mankind or, or the humanity's rune. Um, we also have... Vunyo, which is fellowship, forward and reversed, fellowship and joy, and we also have Kenaz in all directions, the light of spirit in all directions, inward, outward, well you're expressing it outward basically, but it can also be coming inward to you. So basically what this is talking about is it's talking about soul level expression or the expression from spirit as opposed to from ego. Uh, everything needs to come from spirit and right now it's not, is it? But it, it basically even resembles this, doesn't it? It resembles that structure. There's your manas. The poles and the cross. right? We just kind of turn it that way. <laughs> I forgot to turn the heat down this morning, but see, we have baby chickens in the, in the porch, the back porch. And so we have to keep the heat up a little bit. So <laughs> I don't know. The crone time of life. Let's do the Let's do the, the, the geomancy room to close out with here, and uh, we'll see what we've got. Uh, da -da -da -da. One for air, one for a single dot for water. Oh, looks like conjunctio. Yep. Joining, unity. <laughs> I don't know. When this stuff aligns, it really aligns, doesn't it? <laughs> So conjunctio, uh, the other opposite of it, the, the uh, complement is uh, carcer, and that's self-imprisonment. So, you know, that's the two sides of the same coin. You either join with others or you're imprisoned <laughs> all by yourself. And this is conjunctio in conjunction with others, basically. That's the thing. You know, we have become suspicious. We have become... Uh, uh, cult-like in our associations, in our belief systems. Uh, we reject 
anything that we used to believe. Everyone has become the enemy, and that is all by design. I, I hope that that is becoming more and more clear. Uh, there really is an underlying deception going on in our lives. Unfortunately, it, it's, 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 it's likely uh, caused by what's going on in the bigger picture in our lives, not probably so much in the underlying uh, aspects of it and you know, the more personal aspects of it, although uh, what's happening collectively is giving other people license, essentially, and permission, you could say, to behave the same way. So to think that what's happening collectively in our country is not trickling down into our personal lives and into our relationships with other people, it is. Uh, when you can't go to certain grocery stores anymore, be like I can't to anymore because of the, the uh, volatile men that are there who can't seem to not uh, try to intimidate people uh, or to try to act like they're going to lose their minds or, you know, uh, get violent. Um, the level of uh, taking assault weapons into big box stores uh, I don't see that happening in my area, but I guess it does. There's an underlying perception of a problem that likely isn't there. It's a response to something that isn't actually there. It's a perception only. If you think there's a problem, well, you're going to create it, aren't you? Something's going to happen. You know, because you're putting that energy into that and you're putting it into that timeline of perception, basically. <clears throat> you're creating that, that and it's based on fear. So see, even if it doesn't actually happen, the perception comes into play and then all of a sudden you believe it is. It's something that you're seeing that really isn't what you think it is. I had that happen uh, yesterday on, on Twitter where I was responding to somebody and I wasn't disagreeing. I was just offering, well, maybe, maybe then it could be this, I don't know, wasn't, you know, disagreeing with that person at all, and yet I basically got attacked. And I almost, you know, and I almost, it almost put me into tears, right? I, I was just, I'm so shocked when, when this happens, like, well, no, 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 I wasn't saying anything. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I believe what you say. I was just offering an aside, that's all. No apology, no nothing. And that's the point. It's like there are people now that will simply plow through every, everything and everyone and not understand that they're the problem. Because it's not that what they believe is the problem. It's how they want to talk about it. It's how they want to push that belief off onto someone else. It's how they can't allow for someone else's own pathway to where they need to go and if it's not what they think then then oh my god they're the enemy now so you see where we're at and i'm just left you know confused because i don't know how we got here i don't know how this exploded out of control other than the notion of permission was given if you are you know i've seen this I saw this when I was young. If if you are around a bunch of people where there's, a, in fact, I had someone tell me this story where they were at this party and some things started happening of a personal nature. And he was so blown away, he just got up and left. Because it's like they all started in doing what they were doing. And he's confused because it's like, why is this happening? You know, and and so he had to he had to, you know, remove himself from the situation because he just couldn't, you know, I guess that's where I, I, I'm at right now. I, I understand the effect, the energetic effect of a strong personality that that creates a cult like following. I understand that, you know, uh, people get caught up again, the sixth ray. They, they don't know how to process, you know, devotion and idealism. If you keep it in the spiritual sense, you do fine. But if you don't, you become a member of a cult, basically, where you cannot allow for other points of view or other ideas to come in. It must be just this in this, you know, this rendition. 
It can't be, okay, let's start out there, but maybe the final product's going to look different instead of bringing all the ideas together to find what's going to work, right? Instead, you make your decision right now. It's got to be this. It can only be this. And if you don't choose it, then there's something wrong with you. Well, no, no, <laughs> there isn't. So just know that if you're experiencing the same thing, just know there's nothing wrong with you. You're going to think what you think. You're going to do what you do. And it doesn't matter what some idiot on, on, on social media says who can't understand that fact. Because that's what they're being. They're being idiotic. So maybe normally they're not, but I don't know. It just doesn't make sense right now. So, so I think that right now we have to be in this reevaluation area in our life where we're, we're going within, we're taking a look, and we're, we're trying to figure out where am I really going here? What is what, this thing I'm involved in, this, this perception I'm involved in? Uh, what am I, what am I, if you start thinking of it in terms of what did I just get caught up in? And if you can, if you can satisfy yourself and say, no, that's not true. I didn't get caught up in anything. I still retain my own sovereignty here. Then you're probably fine. But at that point, you've just got to ignore everybody else because they may not be so fine. Right. And I think that's what's going on right now. I just think that we're reassessing relationships. We need to understand with full clarity what's really been going on. If we've gone down a path that really isn't sustainable, then we just need to change course. It's just as simple as that. Recognize, okay, that's not going to work, so let me go find something that does. Right? That's all you got to do. Don't beat yourself up. It's not. It's just one of those things that happened. There was a lot of external forces that were trying to make this happen. You need to understand that as well. You know, the long-played con, this has been going on for years, the planning of this by external forces, some within our country, some and a lot without. But he, they had help from within. <laughs> so you got to get your head around that. And if you've been drawn into that, you got to let it go because it's not going to sustain you. It's certainly not going to sustain us collectively. And now we have to be concerned with that. We have to be concerned with how we see one another. Are we looking at each other as, as, as the other or as the other side of self? Understanding the menace of the whole experience, self and others in joy and fellowship and balanced energy exchange. Because this is where we need to be. Not this, you know, fake news and, oh, well, how do you know they're my supporters and you know, all of that nonsense. Well, maybe they're not. See, because that's the external force, the long played con. The problem is, is when you have someone who's using it to his advantage or her advantage, you know, they're part of the con. And it might be tempting, you know, when you want to win, but you can't do that. You can't be part of the con. So that may be what, you know, Mercury retrograde is going to allow us to do. Loosen those bonds of perception right now and just sort of sit back and observe and see, okay, where was I really going with that? Did I mean to? Do I really need to? Do I really want to? And that's really kind of, I think, what we're doing right now. So in any event, I, that's all I have, I think, for today. Um Again, you know, pay attention to the astrology here. Lots of energies happening, but I think that um, they're there to give us a lot of information. It's not to tell us that anything is carved in stone. Uh, it's just that we need to be aware of some things and we need to be aware of how they're structured and what we can then do with them to better, you know, enhance our lives and, and take us in a more positive direction. Uh, and one that is, in, is integrated with others. You know, the manas today is so important uh, uh, in terms of unity and, re, and reunification and the restructuring of our, of our lives together. So in any event, uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Oh, uh, one thing, Confessions of a Back Porch Herbalist did go live today, the second edition. Um, there's a link to it below the video. Also, Shifting Perceptions, the newest book, is also out. It came out last week. Um, there's a link to that as well if you want to check those out. It'll take you to my, the Books to Read page, and it'll show little icons of the different booksellers you can buy them from. Uh, and... Uh, and I'd love you to check them out. Um, the Back Porch Herbal one, that that was my very first book. And I published that back in January of 2016. And I thought it would be a good idea to revise it and uh, do some additional stuff in there. I've changed some stuff of how I do things. Um, 
and uh, in terms of making medicine, cannabis medicines and all of that. Uh, but basically it talks about how I achieved remission from severe RA that, that if, had I stayed, had I not done this, I don't, I, I don't think I'd be alive today. I really don't. I was that ill. And that takes its toll on the body. Any type of autoimmune disease does. But, but whatever, whatever the situation with me, nothing they were doing was taking me out of that severe range. And so I just, I just decided to ease my transition and I became a cannabis patient. I started researching while I was, we were growing the plants and uh, over the summer. And by December, I had made my medicines and I started taking them and I decided how I was going to do it, you know. And I'd been doing things along the way, a lot of raw cannabis and smoothies. Raw cannabis leaf is wonderful. Dietary cannabis should be a staple in our diets, in our smoothies, in our juicing. Uh, it, uh, all the omegas, three, six, and nine. Uh, same thing with hemp hearts. Uh, hemp, hemp and cannabis, they're, they're same plant really, just different levels of THC. Uh, but, but basically you're talking about something that never should have been taken out of and, 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 and put into the, into a schedule. It should have never been taken out of the pharmacopoeia. It's, it's, uh, uh, two and a half months into it, I was in clinical remission and I was severely ill for over 13 years. So, so I know that cannabis can change your life. I know it can, if you're, if you've been chronically ill and you want to maybe try to find a pathway out of it, um, you're, the, 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 the method I used was saturation where I was just saturating my body with cannabis and two and a half months later I was in remission. Uh, and so that was that I achieved that back in 2011. I stayed on the Humira the biologic I was on until my last dose was on uh, uh, September 13th of 2015. And I've had, I, I had no return of symptoms along the way. I probably could have re- stopped t- doing it before that, but I was terrified because I had been so ill. And, and so basically that's what the book's about. It just, it's not very long. Um, it, the last part of it is about uh, then also adding traditional herbs into the mix because I'm also an herbalist. And so you know, I had wanted to do it that way, but nothing was working. Things were so out of control. Uh, I didn't know what else to do. And so I went, you know, to the doctor and this is what happened. And, and, and I just describe it. Um, healing is possible. Uh, I believe that, that, uh, I believe that there is an endocannabinoid system within the body with cannabinoid receptors that need to be interacted with. If you don't, then the body's homeostasis goes awry. And, you know, the kinds of things that we're eating now that, and that, that affect our immune system, uh, the pliability of it, you don't want it to be pliable. <laughs> Not that way, <laughs> you know. You don't want things leaking in there and causing problems, and that's what happens with autoimmune. So, um, again, you know, you have to, if you're chronically ill, to try to get out of that, you have to adopt a multi-prong approach. But for me, this is what I did and for me, anyway, it was successful. So if you want to read about it, um, you know, I, I, I highly I highly recommend it. Uh, uh, I found some punctuation errors, <laughs> so I fixed all of that. Uh, but I but I, I, I like I said, I've, I've updated it and it 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 uh, was some of my progress. And I've, I've just I don't know. I, I think that it's it's worth a thought if you're to consider anyway, if, if you're really ill and you you're not seeing any any way out of it. Um, research cannabis, and that might be the way. So, in any event, thank you so much for watching. Uh, check out the blog over at I'mSteppingAside.com. This is going to go up over there, as will the correspondences and astrological information. Uh, I don't think I posted it last night. I think I got it ready, but I don't think I posted it. So. I'll, I'll make sure and I'll, I'll, I'll go check that out and see if I did. But if not, it'll be up shortly as well. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, thank you so much again for watching. Be good to yourself. Be good to one another. And blessed be.